back to the Berg Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. With me today is Dan. Hey, everybody. And Ford. Hey, how's it going? And we're talking about breakfast, but we're not talking about food. So Wait, that's my favorite meal of the day. Why we got to talk about <laughs> something else? Actually, I love breakfast. That is my favorite meal of the day, too. It's so funny, though, because I like breakfast foods. Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily have to eat it for breakfast. I don't have to eat it in the morning. I could eat it. Uh, 20, there's a reason why the diners oh. are 24 hours a day with that. Yeah. And I love like cheap, greasy breakfast, yeah. right? Like it, Waffle House. <laughs> uh, not Waffle House, but there used to be a little place called Town Hall. Yeah. And I was like, that was the best. Yeah. You can, Allie and I could go for breakfast and spend like $14 and you'd leave full, you know, yeah. for sure. That doesn't happen many places anymore. So. Yeah. You could leave for fourteen dollars full, but it'd be cheap and it'd be better by two yourself. people. No, oh, yeah, no, by yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's true. Okay, that's that's true. I could spend fourteen dollars a wall and be full, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't have enjoyed. There's it our first much. plug of the podcast. Well, well, <laughs> well uh, yeah, we got a no, second town hall. Town hall. They don't exist. They don't exist anymore. Yeah. But we weren't talking about breakfast foods. We can't get a town hall sponsor. (laughs) Maybe we can get a Wawa sponsor. Maybe a Wawa sponsor. Yeah, there we go. Wawa, if you're listening. Yeah. Anyways, we're not talking about breakfast food, though. Um, So we had yesterday, yesterday morning? Yeah, yesterday we had our uh, annual, we do it every year, uh, employee appreciation breakfast. And um, also an opportunity opportunity to uh, go over a couple things because we've got everybody in the room. So. Did some uh, did some benefit renewal conversation and stuff like that, right? So well, it's tough because we are so scattered as everybody in our business is that every time we get together, no matter what the event is for, we got a couple other things we need to kind of get in. Like that's just the reality of it. It's like okay, we don't get to be in the same space. So if it's whatever event that we can get ninety percent of the team in one spot, unfortunately, it's always a you know. Du- not duplicitous, but there's two different, there's more, multiple reasons that we have to like knock out a couple things at sure. the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely true. Yeah. It was one of the things that struck me and it, every time it strikes me and I, I mentioned it to, um, I mentioned it to Justin and Stetson was that, uh, when I pull in somewhere, you know, we had it at the heritage, um, when I, when I pulled into heritage and, and when I was leaving, especially, and there's all these trucks, not just Berg trucks, but all the, you know, all the employee vehicles, all of them. And I think back to like that Merck breakfast, we had at a diner. Like know. seven trucks out there. And we thought it was like a seven lot. trucks and we thought we were something, you know, yeah. we were like, this is, this is crazy. Look at all these Berg trucks, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and how far it's come, you know, how, how big it's grown. And that's just the one piece, you know, that's, it's the big piece, but that's the one piece. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I always think that's interesting too. Um, and I haven't been here or seen it for as long as you guys have obviously but i i know some of the first meetings that we had you know they weren't they weren't that big 10 12 kitchen people. table would cover it yeah yeah so we used to call it the conference room right <laughs> yeah. downstairs that little room that now has a couple of offices in it i mean the first and, meetings uh, there were still tables with the chairs and then later yeah. like it was just chairs because we didn't have enough Rails, space and space, then yeah. then it had to be then off-site. it was a shop and it was a shop a couple times we did. that's right yeah had to clean the shop up and make sure yeah. it was all good for yeah Eating garage. Yeah, yeah. All the different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've used all different things. And we're, yeah. you know, somebody said, uh, leaving us. So they were like, we're almost too big for the heritage. And I was like, hey, we're getting, getting, we're getting close. close. Yeah. Not quite there yet, not but we're close. Yeah. You're going to be sitting on the edge of a table or something. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go to like, uh, like student style eating. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. got a tray. <laughs> but it was, uh, I mean, it was good to see everybody together. Uh, and, you know, actually one of the guys commented to me later in the day that, you know, like they were, they were a little surprised that the benefits were able to stay, you know, consistent, stay flat. Cause that's, yeah. that's not where we are right now. Everything costs more. You can't buy a cup of coffee costs more than it did last year. So, uh, it was one of those things, it was, you know, nice to hear. And, you know, we all struggle as, um, you know, as employees of Berg, even Ford, you know, being the owner, but still an employee, you know, you struggle with the, the healthcare system and the benefit system and how that works and how it impacts you sometimes when you need it, you know, right. Cause when you don't need it, you just sort of forget about it and you don't really like paying it, but you just forget about it. But when you need it, usually that's when, you know, you start to incur some cost, and then, sure. you know, that's where the frustration sinks in. So it was, it was neat to hear one of the guys say, you know, that they, that I was talking with, you know, they appreciated it. Yeah. It yeah. does feel like one of those costs that always goes up. Right. And, um, and sometimes significantly too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've had some renewals in the past that I think there's like 20% yeah, plus double digits yeah. and you know, 20%. And, uh, and we, we could talk about insurance for a long time. Insurance feels like one of those, and it would things. not be a positive conversation. <laughs> yeah. It would not be pleasant, but I think it's one of those things too, that, you know, 
we have to help the team. And, you know, just because, like you said, ignoring it until you need it makes it worse. And I know, like, you get together and, like, unfortunately, every year you have to fill out paperwork or you have to log on and stuff. But, like, spending 20 minutes, a half hour, really reviewing things ahead of time so that if an unfortunate circumstance happens, you know where you're at. Right. And you know what you have. Right. Not like, oh, no, I'm in the hospital. I got enough. I have no understanding of any of the things. Because, unfortunately, you have to be a self-advocate all the way through the process. Right. Nobody is looking out for you except for you. I mean, my wife had kids in the last couple of years. We've had kids, not, but she, you know, in the hospital. And you have to, like, check with the nurses because they're not paying attention to, you know, you. They're like, hey, uh, excuse me, we're over here. Or, you know, like, hey, yeah. did, you know. Did you actually read the sheet in front of you before you're deciding to do something? Like you yeah. just, you have a certain level of trust in the system until you realize that you really have to be your own advocate. So I think that's why, yeah. you know, yeah, I can understand you can click and just say same as, but I think everybody should, you know, spend a little bit of time actually reading through all the options. Yeah. You know, we give multiple options so that people can kind of, it's an a la carte menu. People can choose what they do and don't want. Some people have chosen things that have been very useful to them. Other times not, but you know, it's not, I understand like this year we have this passive thing, which is really cool because it's a little challenging, but I do think everybody should spend at least a couple minutes. Like I even took the pack home because I would have probably just clicked like, yes, just renew. Right, and I was like, all right, yeah. me and Tamara are going to spend a little time just making sure that everything is appropriate. Yeah, yeah well, and even, you know, the, the HSA is a, is a big piece of this, right? We have two of our plans have an HSA tied to it that's available and it's twofold. The one fold is it's hard to make a decision, whether it be your 401k or an HSA that you're going to pull money out of your, your money that's available for you to spend day to day and allocate it to something that either is some benefit in the, in varying times of the future, right? A 401k is years out of protecting you against being able to have a life after work. And then HSA is for when that something goes wrong, you know, but it's something that the team and everybody else really needs to take a look at. Cause if you, if you can budget it in that, you can, you can move that money in essence, you can cover almost all of the out of pocket tax free. Now you still have to spend the money, but you were going to have to spend the money anyway. And depending on your tax bracket, you know, that could be significant savings versus not doing it that way. And and as was brought up at the meeting, you can change it at any point. You know, so like you could have it a little bit lower and then realize actually I'm going to something's happening. I'm going to need this money and move it and save yourself some money. You know, and sort of as Ford talked through the, you know, when when Tamara had the girls, uh, same thing just recently. Charlotte was in. Charlotte ended up having to have a, a, like an emergency appendicitis. And uh, and Charlotte has a couple allergies that we, we manage. And uh, not life-threatening, but not good for her. They impact her. And corn. Like they were, we realized all of a sudden she started to get a rash. And we, were, we asked them about it. And they were like, well, yeah, there's no corn in there. And then first ingredient or second ingredient, dextrose, which is corn. Because mm. the, the, you know, the food industry and medical industry have figured out 150 different names for corn so that they can keep reusing it because it's cheap. And so in in that scenario, when you talk about being your own advocate, we just assumed that when I said to the the doctors and nurses, she is allergic to corn, you know, that they would say, okay, and know all the corn derivatives. And they did not. Erin was actually more knowledgeable about the topic than they were, you know, and that's not a knock on them. They don't deal with it every day, but we do sort of walk into both the medical profession and healthcare and insurance and just look at people like, well, they're the professionals. So they're going to, they're going to, you know, do what's best for me. And that's, it's not, not the case, but it's, you need to be your own advocate because right. no one else is going to. Yeah. You have to be a participant and yep. you can't just, uh, be along for the ride. Right. Yep. And I, and I love that you said that because the self-advocacy piece and, and we did, we talked about it a little bit in that meeting is, is so, so important. I, I know that like, um, none of us, are experts in health insurance, right? Uh, and and like at times, those who have to use the system a lot get close. But where you know we do, we rely on the information that's given to us. But if you're not going to actually utilize the information, if you're not going to read it, digest it, understand what your options are, ask questions about it, then you might as well have just said, "Well, just hand me something because right. I'm going to take whatever you give me," uh, and it may or may not be the right option. I think it's I think it's cool that um, that we still have like the variety of options that we have. I know uh, friends that have you know their companies for a variety of reasons. Some of which we talked about already: the increase in costs, um, the 
the complexity of plans has changed. So I know friends who have said like their companies have gotten rid of like options A, B, and C. You know, like you, you got like, one option, take yeah, it. Yeah, here's here's the option that we have, and here's the other pieces you can add on if you want to. But that we don't have like the variety. Um, I think I think it's good. I, I like that we still have the variety. It's it's been tough, and I got to give a lot of credit to Chad uh, and Tracy, uh, Tracy here at HR. Chad, uh, one of our partners that we have been working with to, to continue to find those options and keep them reasonable for our people because the, that, the ability to kind of comb through those pieces and like understand that the future 12 months might look different than the past 12 months for you health wise and which choice is right for you based on those circumstances. Like, am I a high user? Do I need the Cadillac type plan that's going to cost a little bit more, but it will, you know, will help cover incrementally all those pieces. Or do I only go for my, you know, normal checkups? Do I, do I not use the, uh, a lot of expensive prescriptions and things like that? And should I go that HSA route and sort of be able to have a little more control in the, the path and the but you plan? Know, you know, so, what's funny is, and yeah. you touched on a lot there, but what strikes me is when we say like that, that Cadillac plan, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like, I mean, we're, we're live, right? It's just going to yeah. be that I say what I say. We don't have the Cadillac plan. Like the Cadillac plan is something that, that fortunately some of, you know, the teachers unions have, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Some of these entities government has, right? Where you pay nothing. You know what I mean? You got to go to the emergency room. It costs you $12. You know what I mean? Like nobody's got that anymore. That doesn't, the plan I grew up with as a kid of, of somebody in the, the international brotherhood of electrical workers, that doesn't exist unless you're there, you know? And so, and they don't cha- even exist anymore because right. of the cost because of the cost. So it's changed. But what's really funny is when we hit on, and it's one of our core values is act like an owner. Right. And it applies here. Like you got to act like an owner in owning that plan. Cause part of the reason we were able to stay flat is that the team did a great job of managing their healthcare in a way that took the most advantage of the care they needed, but didn't just outright blow money by, you know, like the obvious easy example is you just run to the emergency room every time something goes wrong. Yeah, It's right. not inherently where the money goes because you'd have to go so much at some other things, but it matters, you know? And so by being an active participant in how they manage their healthcare, then that can help control the cost and kick back to you. But it becomes one of those things that it's not really a Cadillac. It's looking at, you know, what plan works best for you. And I would argue that the the middle HSA plan might be the best plan to have because mm-hmm. the PPO has that 80% kicker at the end mm-hmm. and the out of pockets higher. But yeah. if you took the HSA, you get the tax break for the money. You do have to pay the upfront money, but your out of pocket is lower. You know, sure. and I'm not trying to like, I, I mean, I am to a point trying to talk to the guys and say like, Hey, think about this before you do it. If you actually look at the math, if you picked one of the HSA plans, you might actually spend less than you would in a catastrophic situation even, you know, if you really needed the care. Um, so just because it's the most expensive does not mean it's the best. Right. You know, you got to look at that plan for what you think you're going to use it, how you want to use it, and realize the thing I like about the HSA is if I don't use it, which I have three young kids, it the odds are I'm going to use it in one way or another. But if I don't, I can carry over that HSA money and have more money that I could apply in the event I need it in the future and get back to the heart of what insurance was supposed to be sure. in the beginning where it was the greater good. Everybody puts their mon- money together. You know, I was talking with someone the other day about it and I said, you know, the, the Amish situation with the barns, where the barn burns down, they rebuild the barn. But as a group, what are the odds that everybody's barn burns down in the same year? It's very low. The odds are that one person maybe burns down every, whatever the interval is. And that's how you can afford to do it. So insurance changed and it became a problem, but it gives you the opportunity to manage it. You know, and I think that's, that's telling. And then you turn that into something else we offer that got talked about a little bit with the 401k and then the, the Ramsey situation, you know, that, that Ford has elected to offer the smart money thing. It's the same thing. Can you, can you get to that budget? Well, I don't know. But if you at least take advantage of the, the availability of Ford making it available and deciding that he wants the guys to have access to the smart money plan, it may give you a window into seeing how you could better manage the situation or at least identify that you're not managing it in the best possible way currently. And then you try and figure it out, you know, and that's a lot of what I think the team tries to do with the benefits packages and, and all the ancillary things is give people the opportunity to be active participants, look at it and say what's best. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I mean, um, you know, this year we had a, a couple guys who were out on disability and fortunately they had 
disability. They had elected to pay for this. So, you know, that's where you say like, uh, you know, oh, lucky. You know what I mean? Like that's in switching gears in soccer. I hate, they yell lucky all the time now. Unlucky, unlucky. Every time somebody makes a terrible play for it, I don't know how this came out of Europe, but every time you do something poorly, a fan yells unlucky. It was not unlucky at all. You made a horrendous pass. You had a terrible shot. You didn't do a good job. And similarly, I think there's some similarity here. So like, oh, that was, that was lucky that that guy, no, it wasn't lucky. He looked at it, had no reason to believe he might need it, and said, I'm willing to pay this small amount to protect me in the event something goes wrong. Now, you could also not do that and earmark money and put it away every week into a, into a fund to protect you against if something went wrong. And you might be in a similar situation if you did that over a course of a career, over 20, 30 years that every year you put money away. But what happens in, in our society at this point is everything is so expensive and we want so much that we spend to the limit and beyond of what we have. And then when something goes wrong, you know, going back to, you always say Christmas comes every year, doesn't it? You know what I mean? But yet you get to Christmas and you're like, how am I going to figure out how to pay for Christmas or my anniversary or whatever the holiday is, you know, but it's not a surprise. You just have to be an active participant. Well, I think there's a tough part too. Like we had this one benefit a couple of years ago that worked out really well for us as a company. And then legislation came and basically made it impossible to have. Mm -hmm. And that was very disappointing because it was something that helped people save towards something in the future or towards rain days or something like that. And so that is the challenge of this across the board is we can never get comfortable with the benefits that are available to us as a team. Like, you know, it's a filtering system. So there's a bunch of benefits out there. We have to, you know, Tracy and Brian look at them and try and figure out which ones are best. And then we offer them. And then they, st- and then each one of the team members can choose what they want to have. But those are changing on the regular. And usually if they work too well, they pull them because they actually worked. <laughs> That's just my thing. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's really tough because I think all of these things, you know, they, it's also the same thing with like homeownership. People actually joke homeownership is a forced savings account. You know, all of these things are set up basically in a way to save for something that hasn't happened yet or something, you know, it's, that's what the healthcare thing is. It's basically like right now I'm hundred percent healthy, nothing wrong. Yeah. But what if something happens? That's what they're there for. 401k someday, you know, you want to go do something else. You want to have that money there for those events. You know, that's why we do some matching to try and help incentivize people to do that thing. You know, it's so I think all of it is really is that if life's on cruise control for people, then they get surprised. And really what we're trying to get is that people don't get surprised and actually just be prepared for things. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. And, and it does all tie together, right? The, the, uh, the smart dollar component, um, the, the choosing the right option from a, a Medicare or excuse me, not, not Medicare, but a health insurance, uh, relationship. Uh, planning for that retirement home ownership, if that's the right option, you know, the, they are all functions of your personal finance and your budgeting. So every time you make one of those decisions, you're saying, what's the right option for my situation now, long-term my family, et cetera. Yeah. And, um, and, yeah, and each one of those comes with its own caveats, right? You know, like, and like what you're saying, like every time, uh, Every time something gives you a, a tax incentive or a tax advantage, you know, like, like you should take advantage of it. Probably. Use it now. <laughs> you should probably take advantage of it now while you can, because someone's going to at some point say, why are we not charging taxes on that? <laughs> or why are we not, uh, pay, you know, making them pay for that service? And, um, and the HSA is one of those things. And, and, uh, you know, our family uses the HSA program. And, and it's awesome because, um, you know, my wife's plan is, um, as she works for the school district, it is, um, there it is uh, a little more, that's a good plan there. Probably. It, well, <laughs> it's this, it's, uh, uh, truthfully, it's the exact same plan. Unbelievable. Um, it's They've the exact same plan, schools. except that this, the school district via charging everybody their taxes pays for it entirely. Um, so So she still has an HSA plan. Uh, We still contribute to the HSA. She just doesn't have a premium that comes out every month. Um, So, or every, every week in her paycheck. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so it's, it's a very similar plan with very similar benefits. It's just that they, uh, we, we can't, we can't, unfortunately, unless we figure out a way to do this, tell our customers that they're all going to pay for 
in our, <laughs> we're going to raise, we're going to raise rates so that the yeah. insurance is just covered. Uh, we haven't figured out a way to do that yet. Um, so, well, and also I think a glimpse into this for the mm-hmm. team is that, um, what we've seen in the market in the last five to 10 years is that every year when we go looking again, there's going to be someone that's going to come in real screaming low. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're all the tricks are the next year they get you, they bang you. Yeah. And so that's why part of like trying to maybe stay with the same brand or some of those things happen because trying to, you know, like they just don't just be like, Hey, this is where we are. They all come in, try and like get your business. And then, yeah. you know, I mean, we've been probably, if I would have kept all the cards I've had since we started here, we've been through like 10 different brands and each one has their own network and out network. It, it's just a convoluted mess. Sure. But you know, that was one of the things this year was just keeping the same thing. So mm-hmm. you'll get new cards, but at least like, if you were using somebody, hopefully they're still using them. And then, you know, some doctors are even getting out of the different, it's, it's just, yeah, it, it, it it's is a, a struggle. It's not, it's, it's not easy for anybody out there anymore. Anything you can monetize, yeah. right? That's the yeah. thing. Like anything you like, you know, you talk about it with you sports a lot, right? Yeah. If you can monetize it, people are going to pay people for it. Gonna you're going to create competition and you're going to have to argue why your brand is better than someone else's brand. And like, yeah. so we, we see it in the insurance market all the time. And it is, it's a struggle. Like the amount of, back and forth, uh, negotiating, arguing, whatever it might be that we do to try and make, make the product consistent because you're right. Like those changes are a disruption. Right. So, you know, uh, you know, we, we have, uh, probably like five or six quotes that we got for, you know, different carriers, different brokers, different product makeups, Etc. And um, and the pricing, oddly enough, for the same people, for the same coverages, is different in every one of those. There was a thirty percent swing in some of them. Every one of those scenarios, yeah. And so, so you're trying to say, like, all right, well, how can I get the best product for my employees at the most reasonable price and at the least amount of disruption? Like, uh, those are like in my mind the three things that our team goes through when we're trying to figure out those benefits like how do we how do we make it rel- as easy as possible get them the most cost them the least and like that's a like a, a that's a hard a, balance it's a collision it's a collision yeah. course for sure do you um, want it fast do you want it good or do you want it well you know cheap like yeah, that's cheap, good or fast you can't have all of them yeah. and, trying to uh, find the matrix of somewhere yeah. in the middle between all three of those yeah. factors and, right. and that's what yeah. we try and do right yeah. i mean that's the line you're trying to walk in it, it's sort of you know it, in an odd way that it can tie back to you know because business is business ford always says like it doesn't matter if you're selling widgets it doesn't matter what it is right it's all it's all the same and in a lot of ways i think you know about i i I reference your, your comment when I, when we were buying a lot of equipment, you know, and you say, okay, but if you buy this piece of equipment, you have to make this much more a month, you know? And so that's the big pieces I try and tie back because I want the guys to realize out there that part of the reason we're trying to do what we're trying to do and, and manage it the way we're trying to manage it and all those things is because if we can get you the same service at a slightly less cost, then when it comes time for renewal, the team has has more teeth to have these discussions and stand their ground and have an argument about why price shouldn't go up, you know. But when you have a spike in cost, well, that's going to get paid for. Like when you know that's the the sad state of the insurance is that's the way it is. If you co- if you cost them money, they're going to charge you that money plus whatever profit they want to make. The only way to stay the same is to try and not go beyond what they anticipated you would spend, right? And right. and. That's just the reality. And that's not all that different from how we budget running the company or how you should budget managing your household. And they're certainly not going to give it back. They're certainly not. It just might not cost you more. It just might not cost you more. So, you know, it's, it's a, it's part of the, part of the business that people don't really see. And they just see us show up at a meeting and, you know, um, one of the guys also, he was saying like this guy standing up there talking and it's, and you know, I, and other people are talking. And then another one of the guys said, I just, you feed me carbs and then make me listen to the insurance guy. You know what I mean? Like it's, there's funny conversations because yeah. it's not our environment to sit there in a room, you know, and not talk to each other. You know what I mean? A lot of our guys, especially when you put them in groups, people are social, you know what I mean? Especially when comfortable. And, and I feel really fortunate that we, we work together and we're all, it's a pretty comfortable group. You know what I mean? You can, you could, you could play a game where you move people around on the tables and it might not be who they sat with, but they know the person, they can have a conversation. They're you know, they're all good people, but you put them in a room and ask them to be quiet. That's a little harder. And, you know, and you're trying to listen to insurance, but like Ford said, left of my vices. I mean, 
Given the situation, I'll probably look at the packet, but really I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take it and give it to Aaron and say, let's talk about this because it will force me to be a more active participant in the process, which if I don't do it, then who do I have to blame? You know what I mean? Like if I, yeah. if you know, and I'm not saying you could pick the wrong plan. Like there's not really a wrong plan. It's just, you could look at what is the best for how you want to operate. Right. You know, if it, if I was, if I was 18 or, you know, 21 years old and single, I'd be taking that high deductible high. I mean, I'll pay as little out of pocket right now. I'll max out my HSA. You know what I mean? That's what I would do. Um, you know, having kids, I, I tend to lean more towards the middle one just because of the out of pocket. But I, I may, I, I actually don't remember you and I had this discussion. I don't remember if I'm on the higher, the middle HSA, but I'm on one of the two because I believe that we can try and manage to that. You know, uh, I had a really funny conversation yesterday with Brad and Brian and I talk about how, uh, we'll say frugal, how frugal we are with certain things. Yeah. And uh, so I was talking with Brad and Carson, unfortunately, had a, had a fall that was just wicked. I found out he not only broke the elbow, he broke the wrist as well. Oof, the wrist geez. and the elbow. This kid's, he's got more metal in his arm than you have a thing in your leg over here. <laughs> but, um, and so he was swinging on a tree branch. That's how it happened. He was swinging and lost his grip and went to catch himself with his hand behind his back. And then that broke the elbow and the wrist. And, uh, but in passing, we're talking about getting the, you know, the, the cast off and then some of the stuff removed. And he was saying Carson had had stitches in his head some time ago, but staples, not stitches. And Brad found that on Amazon, you can buy the staple remover tool and bought it and removed the staples himself so that he didn't have to pay. Go back and pay. Go back All right. pay. So that is, I'm not asking everybody to be that active in managing it, but I do appreciate it, Brad. Cause I, so last night I told Aaron and the girls about it. I said, so girls, if you get staples, Nobody else is pulling them. I'm we're not even buying it. We're borrowing the tool from Brad. Going, we're just going to Brad's house. He's already. He's like an expert. He's a pro. He's done he's it. He's a professional. He's already done it. Yeah. He can pull out the staples. I believe this story was me, but I'm not 100 percent sure. It was in my family. Someone had a cast. Dad figured out how to cut it off, but as he was cutting the fiberglass, the fiberglass further down got so hot that it started burning the arm because. <laughs> Like, um, I don't remember if it was me or one of my brothers, but they're like, ow, ow. And I was like, why are you, it was like, it was like an arm or something. But because the fiberglass was getting so hot because he was trying to cut it and yeah. slowly or whatever to make sure it was clean to take the cast off, <laughs> that literally it almost burned. It almost like burned a, him. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's, it's just a different, we were actually talking about this yesterday somewhere else and about like, you know, people, one guy was so proud. He said, both of my daughters, he said, when they went off to college, they went off of the toolbox. Mm -hmm. And he said, now they're like hanging all their friends, like, you know, pictures and, pictures and stuff yeah. like that. Cause all the other friends are like, you have a drill, you know how to use that drill. Yeah. He's like, that was my biggest accomplishment. He said, you know, they went off and they actually knew how to use <laughs> they those hands up and they knew how to they use had it. Skills. Yeah. Yeah. That's Aaron yeah. says that all the time. We want to create usable human beings who are, are physically capable of doing things, right? right. Like good yeah. people, but that are physically can, capable yeah. of contributing yeah. and being yeah. self-sufficient. Like that's, that's an sorry. accomplishment yeah. as a parent. Yeah. I, it's funny you say that I had the, the stitches. I think I told you this story before. My uncle was a doctor. And I had had stitches in my hand and we were at a birthday party. And, and I just, when Brad was talking about it, I told him this story yesterday that, uh, that we were, my dad said, Hey, do you want a piece of cake? It was a birthday party. And so I walked over to my aunt's Island and I was like, I went to grab the cake. And as I put my hand out, my dad pinned my hand on the counter. And then my uncle, my, my dad had a beer in his hand and my uncle was drinking a scotch. And my uncle got scissors out of the drawer and cut the stitches out of my hand right there. They, they thought it was the funniest thing ever. Now, I don't think it actually hurt. I don't remember. Like it right. doesn't hurt yeah, to get stitches hurt. out, right. yeah. but uh, but like two uh, mildly intoxicated dyes laughing while pinning your arm on the, I think that was what created the, 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 the panic. The panic, yeah. certainly. I, I, I think they could have yeah. just, and that was what I was telling in the story. I said, like, you could have just warned me. I was like, did you at least warn Carson? Like, this is going to be fine. We're just going to do this. Or I said, like, you know, like catch him, put him in a headlock. Like, you're going to get him at noogies and then pull the things out. <laughs> so you got to, you got to, I've, I've learned that. So if I'm going to do something like that, I'm going to warn the girls what's going to happen. Okay. You know, so here's what comes next. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, have to yeah, be yeah. terror. Well, and then actually tie into this, but on the back side of it, um, if people have injuries with muscles and different things, like some of us I've have some family members have done this, but like do the PT part, uh, right? Like you can do it at home. You don't have mm -hmm. to keep going, but follow through with stretchings and all that kind of stuff. Because right now it might not be a problem. I have a good friend of mine that I grew up in the excavating business with me and he fell and broke some stuff. And now he can't move his arms past his shoulders because when he did, like, hit a rotator thing and he didn't do the stretches, didn't do the recovery was yeah. fine. And now he can't, like, use, you know, and now it's twice as bad because he didn't do that stuff. And so it's always funny when right. people are like, oh, no, I'm fine. It's like, you know what? For a couple of weeks, 
you know, like I said, you can do it at home. You can do the Amazon package thing. I'm not saying that, but it, like at least follow through on that process to, to regain right. whatever motion or whatever, because at some point yeah. it'll actually be worse you, for you. You know what that makes me think of too, isn't it? It's one of these things that, I mean, how many times did, did you or I or Brian jump off of something, right? Like you just, you know, you're getting, whether it be a machine or you're, you know, like cutting trees, tailgate comes to your truck, whatever, just to get, whatever it is, jump off the yeah. back of your tailgate, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's one of those things like you, I'd, I'd probably do it still now, but as I get older, I start to think about it. Like, it's just, just put a hand on something, like slow it down. You know what I mean? Like in other words, how many, you know, how many times oh, yeah. you have, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, that similarly, you know, like just, if you could do the little smart things, like yeah. forget about healthcare, just like from a, you know, a ability to do things as you get older standpoint, you know, like it's, uh, it's one of the neat things right now is we like made a joke the other day about that I'm getting old and, uh, and that I can still do what I want to do. You know, I'm, I'm, it's of all the things I'm pleased about. That might be the, one of the most, I can do almost everything I could do when I was young. Can't do it as well, sure, but I can still do it, you know, and I can, I can hold my own and that's, that's something, you know, and now that I would say is lucky because I made about as strong an effort as you can to injure myself. But you know, it's, uh, it's something that if I could tell like a younger version of myself, you know what I mean? Like the one that always comes to mind is my dad when I would warm up, if I was going to pitch or anything else. And he'd say, you got to warm up. And I thought warming up was throwing as hard as I could with a lot of curveballs, And that's not how you warm up at all. <laughs> uh, and, and that's the thing that I probably can do least now, you know, like I can throw, but not like I could before because my shoulder hurts. Mm. And, but uh, you know, 12 year old me didn't want to listen to that. Sure. Yeah. So think about it when you're out there jumping out of a piece of equipment, just hold the handle. I think the point is be a participant in your health, yeah. right? Not don't, don't, don't just be along for the ride. Yeah. Whether it's uh, choosing how your uh, health care is provided to you, choosing yeah. how you recover from things, choosing how you uh, are aware of your surroundings to avoid situations, yeah. be a participant. Yeah. Cause if you're, yeah. you know, if you choose not to drive right now, you're going to get driven later. You know, yeah. I mean, you're you're going to be the passenger later. At some point in our lives, all of us going to have to be the passenger. The longer you drive, the more control you have. Yeah, that's true. That's a good place to wrap it up. Thanks for joining us today, folks. We hope that you got something from this, and we hope hope you come back for another episode.